When we were young boys, we, we were fortunate they had a lot of birds in this area, a lot of ducks. Greenheads, widgeons, uh, gray ducks. Uh, we had teal. You couldn't imagine how many teal we used to have back in the day. Now it's, you know, it's all ringneck and uh, canvas back and blue wing teal, and it's just, it's just a different species. It's, don't know why, just, it's changed. What's changed a lot is the amount of water. Back in the day, with our knee waders on, we would walk out, put all our decoys out, get all our ducks, you know, just by walking. The Louisiana coastline's lost a lot of land, that's for sure. The trees are dying. You know, the water's higher than it used to be. We used to have bank all the time. We never have bank anymore, hardly. It's just a different, it's not supposed to be like that. You know, it kind of takes the wind out of your sails, but we love what we do and we keep fighting to do it, so that's what it's all about. That mossy oak duck blind blends right in by the time they see it. It's a sin shoot where they're going, not where they've been. It's steam rolling from the top of the blind, fresh duck cut up, tastes just right. with my eyes to the sky This morning, Jay and I are linking up with Hunter Para and his Black Lab Trooper at his lease in Orange Grove. We all met in college, and even though we don't get to hang out like we used to, we still find time to meet in the blind once or twice during the season. The other guys are in another lease in Orange Grove doing their thing. Hopefully they got a good hunt, but got a big spread, nice looking spread, a lot of grass, nice north wind, feels good out here. We're gonna kill some ducks. You see that green light moving across the way real slow over there? That is a barge pushing probably crude oil or some kind of oil field equipment. Uh, it's the intercoastal waterway. It runs all the way from Florida to Texas. It's always got big boats passing through 24-7. All day, all night, just working, trying to make a living. Hunting bandit pulled you. That's <laughs> stud do. spot yesterday morning. We didn't start shooting till look right here. Pulled it. Is it? Nope. Duck. You got crunch. That's not ring, that's doe grease. Big old white back. Ooh, nope. Shooting in blanks again, huh Jay? Man, it's uh hammer time. No <laughs> bird. Look right here, dude. Coming right at you. There you go. Into. Trooper! Good boy! Look at him go. We would have never found that duck. Nice little young pintail. Who? Jay said they got three in a pin. I would take that over a limit every day of the week. Absolutely. You don't get those down here often. 
anytime I get to go duck hunting, it's a special time. But when I get to hunt with a great retriever, it makes it even more special. Ooh, ooh, look at that big white, white belly, huh? Big old white guy. Big canvas back right here that Hunter just nailed out of nowhere. We never saw him. Hunter just smoked him. One of my favorite eating ducks uh, on the planet. And what I love to do with him is just do a simple, like salt, pepper, herbs, maybe stuff it with some apples or citrus or whatever, and just give him a roast in the oven. It's got this beautiful fat cap and skin uh, right here underneath this, all this plush feather. So, man, just a wonderful duck. Awesome to have him on the strap. Right from the front of the boat, you wanna take one of these? Good shot. Damn it, boy. <laughs> and that's how it's done on the bayou. Life's good, T. Let's go find some ducks. As the BBs fly, I don't want to die. So I'm going to kill you before I die tomorrow. <laughs> I don't need to pay y'all for y'all music. I sing my own. Just think about that. Actually, I probably have to pay Queen for that. Or somebody from Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Great morning here in Orange Grove with Jay and Hunter. Man, we had a beautiful morning. Got a beautiful strap. Not a full limit, but we had some great laughs and great stories here in the duck blind. I am hungry. Got a steak and egg sandwich that we're going to be cooking for lunch and a little apple cider kind of warm cocktail with some Maker's Mark uh, to wash it all down with. Let's get cooking. Growing up in Louisiana as a child, we likely took these swamps for granted. They were always around us. We were always taken into them to go hunting, fishing, maybe set some crawfish traps. Maybe it's just a boat ride. As adults, it's undeniable that you see the changes occurring right in front of your eyes and the differences that you remember as a child. Storms are getting bigger. Canals are getting wider. These swamps and marshes and grasslands are changing. The birds are changing. The feed is disappearing. The ducks are moving. And it seems like these marshes and swamp lands are in the fight for their life. So we are uh, here in Orange Grove, and um, this is part of Jay's lease. But when I was a little boy, we hunted Orange Grove. That's where my dad had a lease, and that's where I started hunting and learned how to duck hunt from him and so on. But we always knew about this lease. We've never been on this lease when I was a kid. Uh, we could hear the gunshots. We always heard about kind of the beauty of this particular lease. But I never got to it until this year. And it's kind of cool to think about when I was 15, 13, 12, however old I was, uh, and thinking about this and never knowing what it looked like and being here as a 36 year old and now kind of just taking in all these live cypress. I 
All right, we're back underneath the Cypress at Orange Grove, and I got some grilled ribeyes that are on the Brio fire pit right now, some onions. I'm also going to scramble some eggs, and we're gonna make some steak and egg sandwiches right over the fire. All right, so I have the grilled uh, ribeye steaks. They're resting over in that skillet. Means time for eggs, and then once the eggs are done, I'm gonna assemble this sandwich with a little cheese and uh, some mustard, then kind of re-grill that bread right over the fire. The blues could get me like the way they can do, but I never thought I could leave you. I never thought I'd be so good. Sure brought you a little table, chef. I don't cook with less, bro. Yeah, bro, we ain't got tables in the woods. Boys, y'all want to build a table, you make one out of trees. We don't have tables, but we have two, three thousand dollars worth of yetis. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> but not a thirty dollar table. We blew our wad. Damn boy. We call that CC Ball. Very, very good in print. Say bon. After the hurricane, yeah. after Katrina, the federal government started realizing that Louisiana was losing a lot of its marsh. That's when we first, we first got our, I guess, our public knowledge of it. Yeah. So they got a lot of federal funding. So what they did is they put a levy system all around Terrebonne Power. All right, way out there. Lake Boudreaux cuts across it. You know, so if you inside of it, yeah. now it's going to be fresh, right? You're predicting the salt water. Yeah. But what you do now is a storm surge. So the storm surge Backs goes up, from back go, storm surge goes from here to here, right? Yeah. You put a levee in there. Storm surge can't go here no more. So it's going to get fresh. But the storm surge on the other side, ah. it's even higher. So the water back. Like showing Pico's cans and cooking tree. We were losing everything. Best as we can do yeah. is to build a levee around and keep what we have left behind it, and eventually you're going to lose everything on the other side of it. Are there any type of islands out there that they are still they, they islands, but not what they were? I mean, they would drive a Bronco to the beach side. They was on the bay side. They would drive a Bronco to the beach side and surf in the uh, fish in the surf, and now it's all the whole thing's gone. Yeah. To say something that you hunted your whole life that's no longer there, you know, it's hard to explain to your grandkids. These ancient cypress swamps, with all their beauty and mystery, were formed by the flooding of the Mississippi River. Historically, as the river flooded and fanned out across these lowlands, it would deposit the sediment and fresh water needed to create this environment we are standing in today. When Louisiana built levees along the Mississippi River, they also cut off the flow of sediment and fresh water that created this environment in the first place. As long as the Mississippi remains contained, these wetlands will not receive the nutrients and reconstruction that they need to survive. We built those levees. We did it for a good reason. We did it because we wanted to build communities. We wanted to settle Louisiana. We wanted people to have homes that didn't flood every year. Unfortunately, we weren't thinking about how it would affect the places like this. GIS Engineering is doing the best job they can do around here to save everything they got. Yeah, that's engineers. I mean, just the like just scientists that like yeah. scientists and land people. That yeah, work. they're just the best in the game. Civil engineering. Engineers. So you guys are more engineers. Stuff than you are. Like best engineers. It's my father-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> I got inheritance on the line. Too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sandwiches have been yeah. destroyed. So now it's time for a little cocktail. Look, I got this easy cocktail during the fall and winter that my wife and I really enjoy. And it just involves a little bit of apple cider or apple juice and a little bit of apple pie spice from Spiceology. Finish it off with a little booze. I kind of do a 70-30 blend of mostly bourbon and then 30% brandy. Oh, 
most of my memory. As we sit around this fire, we may not be able to solve the issues of Louisiana's wetlands. But together, we'll fight like hell to preserve what we have. No matter where I go. Yeah, heat him up over your bottle. Dry him out. Hold that line right on top. Yeah. You are my sweet home. Yeah. 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 Roots run deep in these cypress swamps. Cypress knees pierce the canvas of this black water waiting for you to stop and listen to the stories of generations of hunters. Their tales of decoying puddle ducks and reminiscing of the good old days give me peace as I find myself wandering off into the beauty and mystics of drooping Spanish moss over century old trees. Sounds of friends laughing in the distance make me smile as I realize that as hunters and conservationists, we are writing our own history. Will our actions today conjure a history that our sons, daughters, and grandchildren will be proud of? I believe so. I hope so. Certainly when I'm gone, there will be a cypress knee with my name on it. And I'll be ready to tell my story the good old days most of my memories they are in you my child